Hello, beloved. It's me, Robin. Robin Hallett, intuitive healer and light sparkler at robinhallett.com. And this is Tea with Robin on today's episode. Are you somebody who carries people with you in your heart, in your mind? Thinking about other people, upset about other people, hearing what they said to you again and again, caring deeply, all the ways we use our spirituality to try and fight these urges we have. This episode is for us who care deeply. Come grab a cup of yum yum and meet me here. Well, hello, beautiful friend. It's me, Robin. Welcome back to the podcast, Tea with Robin. This is episode 143. <laughs> 143. All of the show notes, any links I mention, any good tidbits, tidbits, you can find in the episode description where you're listening now. Or go to my website, robinhallett.com slash 143. If you're new around these parts, howdy doody, it's lovely to meet you. My gratitude for however you came to be here today. This is a podcast about healing, and I would say it's super down-to-earth love offered from a friend who's in your corner and has your back, and that doesn't always mean, <laughs> you know, I'm putting the icing on the cake for you. Sometimes it's about digging deep and taking responsibility for how we show up in life. So I hope you love it here. Um, yeah, I really do. I, you know, sometimes I feel like we don't have enough of this kind of love going on in the world and we need more of it. So I hope you'll stick around. Friends returning. Hello, hello. How has your week been? How have you been doing this week? I am noticing for friends in the love posse, um, that's what I call all of us in the tribe that we hang together. It's been an intense week. So if you've found some emotionality in your giddy up this week, if you've had some intensity going on, if it's been deep for you, if you haven't slept well, if you've been having some physical stuff going on. Um, yeah, you know, I'm going to say you're right on track. Things are moving. Things are clearing. There's energy happening. This is one of those times where, I don't know if you want to call it up leveling or we're going down to the bottom floor. Uh, one way or another, we're deepening and expanding, and it's really, really good. But sometimes, if you're not careful, you can be tempted to say, the shit is hitting the fan and my life sucks. And basically, people, I have gotten nowhere on my journey. Am I right? You can be so hard on yourself. So, um, you know, if that's you too, I'm sending you my love. I'm not that you need my love to get through it or anything, but I just want to say in solidarity, like I get it and you are not alone. And yes, I'm sending you some love right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's never a bad thing to take stock of where you're at and really keep trying to hear what it is you're actually feeling, the stuff you've been thinking about, um, the vibes you've been riding in, to make space for that. It's really important. Over here, I'm doing pretty well, actually. Um, I'm having some of that going on, too. And I'm finding that it's kind of exciting to be in this space of going deeper and knowing myself more fully and also inviting myself to look at things in a new way. And we're going to talk about this. I'm not trying to talk in code. I just don't want to say it all twice. Um, we're going to talk about this today. So if you're somebody who struggles and you care deeply and you have that mind that who <laughs> the ruminating mind that never seems to shut up going round and round and round about the thing you're thinking about or the thing the person said or regretting whatever 
This one's for you today. Um, let's dive in. Did you did you bring some yum yum with you today? Did you bring something to sip along? I made, um, I've been up, it's Saturday as I record this, I've been up super early working a longer day today, which I love. I am so just like, if I'm working with you right now, I get to say it here because you, you know, like it would be weird one to one. I am so in love with the people I'm working with right now. I can't even tell you. It is so much fun to just have permission to say, A, I love what I do, but B, also the people I see right now, this whole time frame, I'm just in love. It is such a joy. And honestly, even that sometimes is hard to allow. Yeah, you get to care deeply. It's all right. Yes. All right, so I have hot cocoa going in one cup, which is kind of cold cocoa now. And in the other cup, I got this morning's coffee. And you know what? I'm going to just pour those together. That seems like a good idea. So here's to us. Um, we rock. There's never been anything wrong with us. There's never been anything we've needed to corral, change, fix, or fade. Here's to celebrating our awesome sauce exactly as we is. Cheer. <laughs> Cheer. I should have said, ha luck. That's what that sounded like. Cheer. Cheers. <laughs> Do you ever judge yourself when you get so goofy? I sometimes do, but you know, I'm trying to honor that that's just who I am for reals. And if I keep editing all these things out that I worry about, we're not going to have a very good podcast. Cheers. Again, cheers. All right. So here we go. I have been noticing that there's a lot going on and like there have been a lot of energy developing for people individually and it's in your relationships it's in your connections with other people things are moving things are adjusting um, and what happens is we go away judging ourselves. We go away blaming ourselves. We go away looking at ourselves in the same way we always do. And what is really so important is that you recognize you're going through something right now. You've been having some stuff happening. Um, I've got some friends right now who are taking care of elderly, um, elderly, <laughs> I feel a little sensitive already at 52. I feel sensitive to that word. But, you know, taking care of parents who are getting up there themselves and need help. I have friends who are um, dealing with their own health issues. I have friends who are raising tiny kids right now and having their challenges. Um, it's just all over the place. And friends who are going through transition with their careers, with their um, writing books, finishing writing books. There are several of you right now in that place. Friends, you know, whatever it is that's been happening for you, it's so important that you turn a new page with how you relate to yourself in this place. Don't just say the same old stuff you always say about yourself. You know, this is a new time and new energy and new perspective is called for. If you ever hope to go to the place you say you want to go, like know who you are more fully. Most people will say to me, like when they come for their first session, I'll say, why are you here or something like that? What is it that you're hoping to gain in our time? Most people will say some version of, I know I'm here for a reason. Like here on the earth plane here. Um, I know I'm meant to be doing something really important with my life. 
or I'm supposed to be doing something different than what I'm doing or whatever. I know I'm here for that and I want to know what that is and I want to know myself. I want to know who I am. I wonder if you can relate to that. I mean, I certainly can relate to that. Uh, of course, here come the cicadas. There's nothing I can do about the cicadas. They just come whenever the hell they feel like it. Sometimes it's the morning. Sometimes it's the night. So I'm sorry. If you're listening in the earbuds, you're probably going to hear them going on. Um, <laughs> it's just a part of part of summer. So um, this morning... I've been thinking about it a lot. I've been saying it to friends that what is so wrong with admitting that you struggle with caring deeply about yourself and your journey instead of being so hung up on the upset itself or if you feel like you could label yourself as a codependent person or a person who um, needs to take a lot of space because the people in your life can be so whack that you won't be able to sleep for 89 days in a row because of the way they behave or whatever. You know, what would be so lovely is just to say, hi, this is me and I care deeply. And what I actually care the deepliest about is myself. And you know what? It's not wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm not bad or wrong if I care the most about me. I think we miss the boat that when we're so disturbed about other people, whatever they're doing, you know, if you're you're having health issues and it's the caregivers that you're so disturbed about, the way they don't get you, they don't see you, or the way they don't do things the way you need them to do or you're you're a mom with young kids and your partner is you feel kind of sucky at helping out more um you know or whatever it is you're you know i give the examples all day long why don't we all take a second and just get a beat on what's going on for us you know that's always the better way good it's a good thing that you care deeply. The thing is, when you care deeply about your upset in that you're in the spin cycle with it, that is not the deep care I, I think you should be doing right now. <laughs> you know, you don't have to fight your urges to be involved or concerned or even committed to it. You, you learn so much about yourself in this cycle, you know. Um, so many people want me to help them. Like, let's learn, teach me how to have boundaries because my parents are nightmares. Or teach me how to advocate for myself better. Um, and all of that is such important stuff. Let me let me speak up for myself or how do I confront this person or how do I let them down gently or all of that. There's nothing wrong with any of that. The thing is, it's not the main point. And the main point is you matter the most. You matter too. You matter the most and you matter no matter what is going on. So... The long way around is thinking you have to work it out out there. You have to get that person to understand you. Or if you've been really terrified about um, your financial situation, you know, so much going on right now in the world. And I should say here, you know, if you have been in the countries hit by stuff that's been going on right now, I have been holding you in my heart as I go through my days, too so much love and I there is nothing quite like natural disasters or riots or looting or food shortages or uh, you know just uh, so many things happening to trigger these kinds of issues but I want you to know you know there's so many people behind the scenes 
holding space for you, praying for you, loving you. You have not been forgotten. That is for sure. And it is what it is. You are where you are. I mean, that's the deal. So whatever's been going on for you, if you've been terrified about financial stuff or food stuff or are you going to be safe, whatever it is, the practice is you have got to find the way to bridge your fear, your terror, the mind swirl that it does, and actually showing up for yourself. Am I making any sense here? So like if you're terrified all the time, it's sort of like not doing anything to help yourself. But if you're terrified or let's say you're in you're having debilitating pain, you know? If you just keep repeating that to yourself over and over and over and basically applying the salve and doing the things and changing the bandages but there's nobody there saying, I'm here with you. I love you. I'm with you. We've got this. You matter. This is horrible right now. It feels terrible. You're talking to yourself here. Um, you know, it's not as helpful. When you can be present with yourself to care deeply about yourself, this thing you're going through is going to move so much more quickly the healing is going to happen because anything happening in our lives, according to Robin, I should say, you know, according to the spirit being known as Robin in this lifetime, I will say, <laughs> is about you learning your place in the universe and how freaking important that is to you. It should be to you. And just imagine for yourself all the stuff you have to blow through in terms of your conditioning, your stories, your family of origin, um, to know that and just function there. Right? It's big, big, big. So showing up for yourself. It's a good thing to care deeply about yourself. You don't have to fight the urge to be involved or concerned or committed to yourself. You don't have to fight the urge to be overly committed to other people either. You know, I feel like we waste a lot of time being afraid and trying to micromanage the energies. But what is really honest and true is just like you, you are here and you matter and those other people are here and they matter. And everybody needs to do for themselves. And you don't have to overdo for other people just because they're going through heavy, heavier shit than you. And you don't have to overdo for yourself just because you're going through heavier shit than anybody else. You know, that's the thing. Let's just show up for us and be here. It's an amazing thing because like for those of us who identify with being codependent, we're like you can't relax, you can't rest, you can't function if somebody else is in peril or they're mad at you or you said something you don't like the way you said it now in retrospect, you know, you can't rest, you can't relax. Am I the only one here who's going to admit that? Because that's me to a T. And um, not to a T. I mean, I have been working this since 1873. But, um, and it's so much better now. You know, it really is. I, I'm a, I am so amazed at my own progress. I am so proud of myself. But um, when we're in it, we're really in it. And you can and you can know that. And, you know, it, there's nothing wrong with us. If you lose sleep at night because you're involved in some stuff right now, sometimes I can't sleep because I'm going to meet new people for healing work. And it's a big deal to me. And sometimes I lose sleep and I won't sleep. And for that reason, 
I will sometimes try and meet the sooner the better because I cannot go like this for long. <laughs> I can't rest until we connect and complete whatever this thing is that all this tension is building up for. You know what I'm saying? You, when you love yourself, you take care of yourself. So there's something wrong if you're a deep carer. It just it means you're awesome. You're awake, you're alive, you're activated. But, you know, you probably have been judged for that a lot. And you've probably judged yourself a ton. And all of the worry, all of the concern, all of the swirl, it's just like the spin cycle of your head. Take a listen sometime and you will see it gives zero I'm not going to say the swear word, but you know what I want to say here about how you're actually doing and what you need. It's just swirling and spinning. You know, so when we're in it, it can be so hard to focus on ourselves, but this is exactly the medicine I'm offering today. You need to focus on yourself. So if you're struggling and you have anxiety, anxiety, if you have fear, if you're upset, if you can't rest, if you, you know, um, you've got a big schedule and you're not getting enough sleep or whatever it is in the middle of all of your upset and worry and concern and the meaninglessness, anybody feeling like life can feel so meaningless, so pointless, what's the point? I don't care if you have to sit down a hundred times today and hug yourself. I want you to do it. I want you to put physical contact on yourself, on your body, and just say hello, 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 hello. I'm here. I'm with you. I know. This is big. It's big. You know, people don't always get why we're like this. I can't even tell you. It's like a Rolodex. Do you remember Rolodex? Right now I could scroll through a Rolodex. How many people in my life have said, you're an odd bird. You're a weird one. You don't walk on eggshells, do you? The other day somebody said, you're a very direct person. Like, all of the ways somebody can tell you you're difficult or challenging or weird or wrong. And, you know, for years, and I mean years, did the cicadas just kick up? It's like the chorus got louder here. This is where we're, we're going to say the big thing in the podcast. My chorus of cicadas just got a little louder. <laughs> For years, I was in different stages with this. And I wonder if it corresponds to the stages of grief. You know, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's amazing work on the five stages of grief? Yes. Um, let's pull that list up. Here we go. Denial is the first one. Um... You know, where you're like, I can't believe they just said I was difficult. I can't believe they told me I'm challenging. If you've been listening for a while, you know, my mom, I've told you this before, but my mom would say her thing was when she would get frustrated with me, she would point to your he her head and say, there's something wrong with your head, Robin. And so you go around like, I can't believe they said that. I can't believe they said that. I can't believe. Denial. Or you just deny, like, what a terrible mothering skill that was. You know, you can deny yourself that, too. You can be angry. You can stay in a place of anger. And, you know, I know this place in me where you remember something for a kajillion years and you don't advance at all. You stay in your anger. Then you stay in your bargaining. You go through the bargaining phase. If only I could change who I am. If only I could change who I am. If only I could change the way I am. Uh, I have to change this dynamic. And you end up 
scrutinizing yourself to the point that you apologize for things you should never have apologized for. Whatever happened for you and this other person, you know, it, it, it was much bigger than just you, you know? Bargaining. If only I could make this better. If only, you know, then you get into this place where it's depressing. I, where you're depressed. I can't, this is how I am. Why am I like this? It's so sad. It's so, then hopefully you come to a place of acceptance. You accept this is who I am, people. I care deeply. I care deeply about the energy I care deeply about the stuff you say, the way you're acting, and you could also say you're easily disturbed, but let's say you're caring deeply. You care deeply. You care deeply about your meaning, your purpose. Those of you who haven't had a lot of work and you'd like to be working more, you care deeply about feeling like you are doing something important, you know, you, that you're contributing, whatever your story is, you care deeply. So acceptance is where we all want to get to, that we want to be committed to our own hearts, not codependent with the energy out there, uh, that's coming in out there. It's so easy for all of this to mingle together, but... um I just, you know, I really want to say that today. There is nothing wrong with you. You are good. In fact, you're everything this world needs right now. Have you seen the state of the world these days? Like how literally screwed up things are? The world needs people like you in it. Direct, outspoken, um, yeah, sometimes, you know, <laughs> we could have said it better. We need people like this to keep calling it out. So do not abandon your own heart. Please don't abandon your heart. How are you going to hang in there with yourself? That's my question. Because you can be in the spin about things that do not matter. It actually doesn't matter if so-and-so is pissed off at you. It actually doesn't matter today if your kids are screwed up by the thing you said to them. Today, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't. It actually doesn't matter if you're not working today. Does it? Has anything happened to you because you're not working? today like physically happened to you literally happened to you yeah it doesn't matter today what does matter that you stay present with yourself that you matter to yourself that you're holding your own hand I've been saying this for the last many episodes holding your own hand hold your hand So many of you here are people who help other people. You're kind of like teachers in the world. You're mentors. You're world changers in your way. You impact change, you know? Maybe you don't have that moment right now where you're judging yourself. You, you are. If you're here, that's part of who you are. You need to learn how to hold your own hand and stay present with how it's feeling to be you with everything that's going on in your life and the world. Like, you need to learn how to do that. Even more than you're worried about your kids or how so-and-so is going to take this when you say it. You need to care more about how you feel than taking care of everyone else. And that's just how it is. Period. 
You know, this is the thing that we've never really been taught to do. We're learning to do it through hard knocks, through people shaming us. Wow, you're, are you, I forget how they said it to me, direct much? It's like, I don't, what does that even mean? Or an ex, long time ago, an ex's uh, family member said to me, you don't walk on eggshells, do you? But, you know, it's not a compliment <laughs> when people say that. It hurts. But you can be in denial about that. You can be bargaining <laughs> with these people. You can learn your pithy quotes and your bravado. You can fake it till you make it. All this crap we've learned to do. You know, it's stupid things people say to you. But, you know, we shouldn't carry it around and be upset about it. What we should do is accept that us being naturally ourselves is going to ruffle some feathers. And that is exactly what the world needs. If you give a shit about your purpose in this world, you should care about making significant change and impacting the world or your corner of it in a positive way. That is your purpose, to share what you're learning in the world and with the world and helping other people take something away that makes it better too. So, you know, hold your own hand this week. Stay present with how it's feeling to be you. And advance the narrative a little bit. Acceptance is the final stage of grief. And it's okay to grieve that you are, you know, like it's you. You are this. This is who you are. Has anyone ever called you intense? Oh, yeah. I have been called intense a lot. I actually love being intense. I accept that I am intense. And you know where my freedom really came in? Very recently when I understood that I need to be around people who care deeply just like me. And I need to stop being around people or lessen my exposure to people who have a limited capacity to care deeply. I'm not trying to talk in code. I'm just so done with being upset about people in my life who seem like they've been pithed. <laughs> I love that word, pithed. Like they have zero care. They don't care. Yeah, I'm going to, um, when you accept how things are exactly as they are, you accept how it is, let them be how they are, you are free to accept that you're not like that. You don't have to be like that. You're not required to be like that. You know, I wonder how many of us would raise our hands when I, if I could look at you and ask this, like, is your spiritual story that you need to learn how to be more even keeled, more neutral, to have no emotion, to not be too high or too low, to not be volatile? Anybody out there been called volatile? To get worked up, to get intense about things? Yeah, me, I'm, my hand's in the air right now. My hand's in the air right now. I am so done with neutral, bland, pithed people. And I'm, it's not for me. You, you, you are free and it's not for me. I need to be with people who get jazzed up about stuff. Juicy, they're excited, they're alive. You know, their face moves, they smile, <laughs> they care deeply. And even if they get worked up, it's fine. I want to hear what's exciting, what's frustrating, what's n nerving about stuff. I want to know. I want to know, you know, I, people who are like, I could not stop thinking about what happened or whatever. Yeah, those are my people. 
And um, in fact, going back to volatile, I was talking to a friend this morning in session and we were talking about being volatile people. As a kid, I was a very volatile kid. Suspended in high school, usually speaking up, speaking out, things like that. But, you know, sometimes I didn't go to school <laughs> either. Um, I skipped school a lot. A lot of us skipped school a lot, didn't we? I did not show up to school. Um, I know a lot of you who didn't go to school and had to have a letter so you could graduate. That happened to me too. You know, um, but we were, we were, what would it have been like to have a different experience with it? To come away feeling like um, being taught, having a mentor who said, you know, there's big feelings in you. Like it, there, there's a big swing in you. It's a creative um, tendency, actually. And it's okay. It's part of who you are. And I want to help you harness some of this energy and learn to channel it and helped us, wouldn't it? <laughs> That would have been so amazing in my case because my family had a history of bipolar disorder. People in my family had depression and there was addiction stuff going on. It's like it got labeled a bad thing for me. I got labeled early with these kinds of labels that you just feel like an outcast, a weirdo, the wrong one, the bad one. And so, you know, it's all right if you care deeply. It's okay if you're passionate, if you're intense. We can help ourselves today, no matter how long it's been, no matter how long this has gone on, no matter how old you are, it's never too late to embrace who you are and love yourself and give yourself the love you need now. Yeah, you can be volatile. Accept yourself as that even if nobody else gets you. That's the kind of thing you hear about people who end up being the most amazing world leaders, poets, artists, musicians, chefs, or just that one super cool person at the party who doesn't do anything. You know, you don't have to amount to something that the ego reveres, right? You don't. Uh-uh. Don't let yourself be so busy shaming yourself while you're trying to get all spiritual on the situation that you miss. This day exists for you, boo. This is your beautiful life, and today counts, and you matter, and you matter the most. So, what do you need today to be okay with yourself? And can you do it? Will you do it? Will you love yourself? I vote yes, yes, and yes. And you know what? Honestly, that felt so powerful. I want to leave it there. Let's, let's all hit rewind and listen again, maybe later this week, and receive the medicine. And here's what I would love. If you see my post somewhere, I usually post this episode to Facebook and Instagram and you feel brave, you know, sometimes you have to be brave. I want to know what this connected for you. I want to know what you're walking through. I want to know a little more about what's going on for you. Where are the next steps for you? And if I can help, I'll be there. You know, this is what I love. I love talking about these things. And you know, in the meanwhile, I'll be here sipping my coffee, my hot chocolate. I also have some toast here. We could have some toast. Mm. Just a little toast and olive oil and sea salt. So good. Of course, now you have to wait for me to finish chewing. Oh my God. Friends, what if you never had to apologize for who you were again? What if on your next sleepless night, 
or your next morning where you wake up and you go, oh, God, the thoughts started hitting you. What if you knew how to handle it? And it was the real deal love. What if it was calm in there as the mind was spinning out of control? This is where we're going. Those of you riding with me, this is the journey we're on. And so many of you are telling me you hear the shift. Well, I hear it in you too. So this is the journey we're on. Remember to hold your own hand this week and stay present with how it's feeling to be you. Take care of what you need. Honor yourself. Yeah. And, you know, always, if you liked this episode, please share it. Help us get the word out. Help us, us. Help our posse grow. Help people already searching for this kind of support to find it more easily. I appreciate that always. You can leave a review. Um, You can repost my post or you can make a new one, share it from your, wherever you're listening, write something cool. I suggest you write something cool. Um, (laughs) And, you know, I'm always here. If you, if this is the right time, let's meet and talk about it um, in a session. I also offer a sliding scale if that works better for you at this time. You know, so many of us are having a new financial experience. And um, so, you know, there's something here for everybody today. All right, beloved, I'm heading back into healing sessions now. I'm going to finish my toast. And I will be here loving myself and loving you. Yeah, I love you, boo. I care about you. I care about this journey so much. Well, this has been me, Robin, Heart Sparkler Hallett, and I'm going to see you here again next time. Bye-bye. Life is very short, let's make the very most of it. You are a precious gem and I love you. Do, 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 do. Are here to shine and shine bright. You are a gem and I love you. Do, 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 do. Life is precious and you are a spark of the divine. So shine like you know it. Rock it like you mean it. Cause you really, really mean it. And mean it. And mean it. And mean it. And mean it. you aren't sparkly cause you are cause you are cause you are thank you I like that I love it honey thank you give me a kiss thanks thanks